Hi there, I have some new junk. This time it's brand new in the original box since 1990 something. We will find out from when exactly it is. It's a Fujitsu printer DL3600, a 24 wire dot matrix printer and Let's see if it's still working. We have original manuals, one in English that unpacks itself and one in German which is in best condition, at least the package. Okay, here it is, as good as new. Well, it is new. Okay, where have we been? We have a printer, we have a short setup manual, we have a power cable with a hand attached, hand changed power plug. That's because in those days Swiss power plugs uh, were something that manufacturer didn't deliver with the, the printers so someone changed that with a screwed version. Then we have a, a sheet feeder that is used to feed individual sheets of paper. Looks like that is adjustable to any sizes of paper goes in on the back of the printer and we have these parts here I don't know what they are at the moment but I'd say we will see that hopefully well that could be some output tray Something like that, I don't know. And of course we have the two manuals here, German and English. And the English version is already unpacked because it unpacked itself from the plastic. So we will use that one. And let's see if everything is ready to run. Yes, head is still moving. Sounds normal. Okay, there is a little problem. This string here should be attached somewhere here. And this is used to advance the, the ribbon. So the ribbon does not 
move right now so we have to fix that first because if the ribbon doesn't move we will print always on the same uh, spot on the ribbon and that will destroy the ribbon within seconds the other problem is this bars here well they are still a little bit oily maybe they could take a little bit more oil so I will put a drop of oil on them but no I think it's not necessary no they are well oiled still I see some liquid oil there they are fine but I have to fix this string mechanism here okay that's the way how the ribbon cartridge comes out and you can see the ribbon there is a little knob here you can turn that by hand and you see the ribbon is moving along there is a large section here where the ribbon goes zigzag and then is pulled out here goes over here there is a rubber wheel inside here and it goes back to the storage and I don't know how many meters of ribbon in, are inside this cassette and I hope there is still some ink on it well doesn't seem like much but maybe it prints we will see that later okay I see now where the problem is normally this is uh, a loop like that but somehow it slipped out of this uh, crimp uh, thing here and uh, it's just slipped away so badly crimped because it's not the string that has well maybe yeah it could be that the actually the string has broken here so I have to put that back on the wheel down here down here underneath is a little wheel where the string goes one time around and then attaches here let me do that now well I fiddled it around the wheel and it already slipped off but it seems it is a little bit too short because it doesn't get here but I realize there is a tension spring here that is missing maybe it is somewhere inside the printer I have to found, find that first that's it that's what we need well it's strange but it seems after a f closer investigation it was the metal clamp here that broke and not the string because the string is absolutely okay so I think that is a manufacturing uh, error because um, well if it's crimped correctly I'm pretty sure the metal should be stronger than the string uh, let me see how I can fix that now okay I have a solution I have these ferrules here that are normally used for uh, cables to make a smooth end at wires and so and I have a, a pliers that fit to them so let's see if that works it already looks good yes it doesn't look too bad but when I tensioned the string it broke on the other side so I have to fix that side too here is it same problem let's do it again okay string is fixed you can see it's holding tight here 
and I had to stretch the spring a little bit because the string is now a little bit shorter than before but you can see it here that's the pin that takes the ribbon cassette and moves the ribbon and it's moving and you may notice no matter on which direction I, I uh, move it it turns always clockwise there is a little mechanical thingy down here with some gears and that always does the same okay let's put it together and see if it works by the way here is the date code 1991 sixth month so this thing is almost 30 year old, years old not bad and now it's time to power it up seems to work like on the first day it has an alarm it says paper out we will put some paper in so as I said before this one is the single sheet feeder assembly where you can put in single sheets that way or that way you can also put it down like this for example if you want to use endless paper which I will use today because I have it around and it's traditional for these printers here so you first remove that again then you adjust the width of this tractor here you put it in on one side you put it in on the other side and you fix that tractor and then we set that to endless and we are ready to print and you may notice I have the white side now up so we can see a little bit better what it does load yes the paper out error is gone well the first step is to set up the printer now this printer doesn't have an LCD display it has no display at all but it has paper and a print head so the setup works like that you press push button functions setup where is the setup key ah okay how to enter setup mode there it is ba 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 turn on power while pressing the mode button okay turn off pressing mode turn on Oh, and release the mode button. Ooh, that doesn't sound well. It printed a little bit, but paper out. So I think I will uh, oil that mechanical stuff here a little bit because that's the typical sound when it stick sticking here on this bar 
and for that I use my oiler here which is a drop oiler works like a pen you push the button and one drop of oil comes out on the tip I found the problem the cartridge here is jammed it doesn't turn anymore because without the cartridge we can print our setup but of course we can't read it because without the ink cartridge there is no ink to print Normally these cassettes can be opened. Yeah. You just have to be careful not to spill out all the ribbon inside. They're just pressed together like Lego. Yes, yeah, that's the problem. You see that's the roller that gets the movement from the motor and that's a rubber roller or some sort of foam and that has disappeared almost completely so that is a problem we have to solve. yeah what's that looks like fungus and we have yes the ribbon has wound around that roller here mm. yes that is supposed to be rubber but now it's some kind of a gooey mess let me see if we can fix that in a short time try to clean that with alcohol of course that will also take away the ink but a small spot without ink is still better than a completely broken ribbon I think that could probably work. It's a piece of rubber hose. It has about a diameter for this thing here. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, but we have a large spring. Maybe I can adjust that a little bit. Let's try it before thinking too much.
Okay, I managed it to repair the ribbon cartridge. I uh, repaired the, the wheels here with some with layers of uh, heat shrink tube and uh, some electrical tape to make new rollers. And I put some ink and a little bit of alcohol to the ribbon itself and well, it works a little bit. I also ordered new ribbons, but uh, they take two weeks to deliver, so we will stick with the one we have. Okay, let's see how this setup uh, menu f works here. It's a little bit different. As I said before, we don't have a, an LCD display or any sort of display. It all works on the paper. Let's see how it works. To get into the setup menu, you press the mode button and turn the power on. Then you wait for the self-test, release the mode button and it starts printing the menu. And as you can see here, that's the function menus, that's the different functions and with the mode key we can select that and you notice this red line goes under the function you selected. So that's your setup menu. Uh, for example, if we go to hardware, I press form feed that goes into the hardware menu and we have a paper out is on detect so it has an underline on detect so it will detect when paper is missing um, the next would be printer direction it's bidirectional or unidirectional bidirectional is selected it has a a part of a line, it doesn't print very well with this uh, ribbon. That means bidirectional, it prints no matter in which direction the head goes, or unidirection, it only prints in one direction. Bidirectional is, of course, a little bit faster. And buzzer is on. That is Word, uh, word length 8 bit, okay, and so on. There is a lot of stuff you can set up. And when you're finished, you press the unload button, it prints the menu again. And the first is save and exit. And if we select that, all our settings are saved now. I haven't changed anything, so uh, it's still the same as before, but that's how the setup menu on this printer works. And by the way, it's all explained here. And it's also explained here in the manual somewhere in the beginning. Okay, let's see how it prints that 24 needle printer. So the first step is to look for an old computer that has a uh, parallel interface and you connect a parallel cable to the printer. That's the only interface this printer has. Uh, optionally you could have a serial interface but that printer here does only have the parallel. And we have here a nice Windows XP, which is a little bit more modern than the printer itself. But it works nicely. Let me see. We have to go to the system management and add a new printer. I'm sorry that uh, Windows here is in German, but I'm 
pretty sure you know how this works in English. The printer is not found uh, automatically, so we choose LPT1 as the printer port. And then we go to Fujitsu and select the DL3600, which is here in the list. That's superb. I have to turn on the printer so that Windows can recognize it. Uh, yes, we want that driver that is in already installed. Name, okay. No, I want, don't want to share it and I want a test page. Thank you. And it actually seems to work. Well, I just removed the print head. That's the flexible cables. That's the print head. That's the ribbon cassette. And if we zoom in on the print head, you can see the needles here. There are two rows of 12 needles. And here underneath that cover are 24 small solenoids, electromagnets. When they are energized, the needle with the, uh, with the mechanical part here uh, flips forward. So the needle comes out here a little bit, maybe half a millimeter, a millimeter something around that and then it hits against the ribbon the ink ribbon and against the paper and that makes one dot one important part is that one here that's the so-called ribbon separator it's a very thin uh, sheet of steel here it's only tenth of a millimeter or two tenths or something it has a little hole here, right big enough for the needles to, uh, uh, to reach the paper. And that separates the paper from the rest of the ink tape, because uh, if that one is missing, the tape would smear uh, on the paper and, well, would create a pretty ugly uh, picture there. So ribbon separator also important something that wears out after printing thousands of line of text or whatever something that must be replaced from time to time okay let's put that head back into the printer you will see that's pretty easy here
and the printer also has a built-in self-test. We will check if that is working. So you can barely see it. Self-test is here. So I advance to that position. Self-test. Form feed to select. Okay, and any key will stop it, so I think that's enough. It would print forever. Repeat printing. Let's see how the quality looks like. And if we look at the printout, uh, for example here, the numbers here, that's where the ink ribbon had a good spot. I would say it's not bad for a matrix printer. Well, it's a 24 needle matrix printer, so that's high resolution. The cheaper one only had nine needles. You can imagine how the print would look with only nine needles. It's very rough. You would see each individual dot. Well, I think that's it about the printer. Uh, I will not disassemble it. I will not th throw it away because I probably have uh, a useful uh, a use for it. Uh, I plan to print my paper rolls for my automatic piano player and that could be useful because it prints on endless paper. So that's exactly what I need. Thank you.